Now that the battery racks are finally installed, I can go about creating my control panel shelf, which will hold all of these funky little toys in this little box here. This is my layout plan. I'm going to screw all these in, ready to be connected. And over here on this empty space is where my controller will sit when it arrives from Auckland. Pretty good. It'll be tidied up once it's finished, but uh, everything fits in quite nicely. Now, uh, let's mount this in the car, and then we'll fit the controller. All right, that's the fuse holder installed. I'll go and put a fuse in in just a moment. Now, what I'm going to do is install the shunt. Uh, now, what I've found a good way to mark the holes where I'm going to drill for the bolts to go in is to use some $2 shop lipstick strange as it sounds so I'll just put a little bit of lipstick on there there we go I'm just trying positioning a few things see how everything fits I like so far it's I've got the control panel over to the right, the controller fits in okay. I'm going to get a piece of aluminium to go underneath the controller and ventilate it underneath to keep it cool, although I don't expect it getting very terribly hot because it won't be going long distance, but um, uh, the control box fits in okay. Just going to get a few more supports underneath and bolt it all in and then wire it up. Okay, and I'm going to bring up all the wires through the little holes. I've got wires for the ammeter and for the voltmeter and for the heater and I'm going to wire up the pot box as well. Alright, we're getting there. Time to pre-wire the controller. I can't install it just yet until I've got the aluminium base for it to keep cool, but for the time being I can at least make sure all the wires reach. In the meantime, now's a good time to do some tidying up paintwork. This is the very front uh, protection panel underneath the bonnet. So uh, let's give it a respray, see how it comes up. It's looking a bit tatty. Got myself a nice new sheet of aluminium, or for the Yanks out there, it's aluminium. It's uh, going to dissipate the heat from the controller. Now I'm just going to drill this in and install the controller and uh, move on to the control box. I'm now widening the holes of the feet that'll hold in the controller to 10mm because it's, uh, it's just a little bit too small, whatever uh, imperial measurement hole that is. Very carefully, so I don't take my feet off. Yeah. Aluminium is so easy to drill. Wonderful stuff. I'm now installing the feet.
using these larger bolts as spacers to separate the aluminium plate from the, uh, from the board on the bottom there. Now that will allow some air to flow through as well. Okay, hey, you asked for it, so this is me speaking. We've installed the uh, controller here on this uh, aluminium plate. There's also some spacer bolts underneath between that and the board for added ventilation. It wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> that has been doing it again. <laughs> you can see here the little 3 volt motor I'm using as a generator connected to the tail shaft of the motor. I'm going to connect a couple of batteries in series with 48 volts and spin the motor and uh, see what it shows. It's connected to the rev count of our little cable hidden in the dashboard. This is Gavin soldering the diode out again after he realised he put it in backwards. Alright, alright. This is Gavin soldering it in the right way. Now this is Rob trying to figure out the uh, high pedal lockout problem we're having. We're having a problem where uh, the ignition still turns on, the contactor still works even though your foot's hard down on the gas and it shouldn't. So um, what's this drawing number 15 we're up to now? Trying to figure out how this should work so that the ignition doesn't turn on when your foot's hard down. Now we've installed a emergency cutoff switch which when you pull the little cord in the dashboard it switches off. You can see down here I've installed a choke cable which is now my emergency disconnect switch. It's actually a cable from an old Mini but in an emergency you simply pull the switch and it disconnects the uh, main power. Okay we've installed the control shelf, the control box and the controller. Um, as you can see here we've installed as you know the cutoff switch for the circuit breaker. The shunt is installed ready for the main cable. The KSI relay is there and the heater relay is there and the main contact is there and the 500 amp fuse is there also. So everything is pre-wired ready to go just waiting for the batteries to arrive in a few days and waiting for the main cable to be crimped and put lugs on the end and uh, then we'll join it all together. Uh, I've also installed the controller on the sheet of aluminium you've seen, not aluminium, I'll have you know. Um, Anyway, so this is uh, it's now installed on a piece of aluminium with some spacer bolts underneath, uh, six bolts holding it in. As you can see, it sits above, so you get a bit of airflow through there to keep it nice and cool. Uh, otherwise, that's it. Just wait for the batteries, and uh, we can get this thing finally on the road. About bloody time.